the beginning that you have made me. One of the most well-known architects to speak at the recent Jerusalem Seminar in Architecture was Michael Pollan from London. He often uses the principles of biomimicry, which adapts properties of animals, plants, and ecosystems to human designs and buildings. If you can adapt something that exists in, already in the natural world and adapt it to our needs, then for me that's a very good way of doing things. He talked about the gecko, which is known for being able to walk on almost any surface and how it has inspired engineers to create a textured steel that works like artificial Velcro, two pieces attaching to each other without welding or toxic adhesive. Paulin's own design work has been inspired by an African beetle. The Namibian fog basking beetle is a, a creature that's evolved a way of finding its own fresh water in a desert, and it does that by losing heat from its shell at night, and, and then because it's slightly cooler than its surroundings, when the moist breeze blows in off the sea, you get these droplets of water forming on its shell, and it tips its shell up, runs down, has a good drink. Paulin helped design the Sahara Forest Project, which includes what's called a seawater greenhouse. Just like the beetle, the greenhouse produces clean, distilled water from seawater. It then uses the water to grow crops. We're evaporating seawater from the front wall, and then at the back wall we've got uh, tubes with uh, seawater running through them and when the warm humid air passes those you get these droplets of water forming on, on those surfaces just like on the beetle's shell. For me it's just one of the best examples of what biomimicry can do because it's an example of a, an organism that has had to find a way of surviving in a really resource constrained environment and you know we're going to start experiencing major resource constraints with a massively growing population and finite resources that are starting to reach their, their peak and, and, and beyond their peak. The winners of the Student Architecture Competition were a group from Betzalel Academy of Arts and Design in Jerusalem. Their design for the Musrara Community Center, on a sensitive border between Jewish and Muslim neighborhoods, stood out. By including a youth hostel in their design, they provided additional opportunities for mingling between different people and communities throughout the day and evening. First of all, for us, the, the green architecture is social architecture. The winners got a grant to look at significant architecture in other parts of the world. Me and Aya this has worked on the project where a couple and we haven't been to Barcelona. And uh, for a couple of years now we want to go to, to Barcelona to see Gaudi's works and all city planning which is very interesting. The conference offered many ways in which architecture can not only create more livable buildings but also help create a more sustainable world. We, we need to bring about some really quite fundamental changes in the way that we make things, the way we get our energy, the way we create our water. And I personally think that there's, there's just loads to be learned from looking at natural examples. Nature has benefited from a very long R&D. But, you know, if, you, if you've got the product of a, a, an amazing R&D period, then why not use it? You know, why try and reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm.